Hello friends, I have a couple things for you today. I have a course about photo editing to release to everyone for free, and I'm going to re-edit a few photos from Halloween costumed photo projects I did in years past, because it's just about Halloween. I'm even dressed up for the event. Let's back up a moment. My photography courses. I have a handful of complete courses, which are each hours long, and take you, the viewer, through the entire process, start to finish. I aim to provide practical advice and to teach you in the way that I would have liked to have learned when I was starting out. I do also make sure to add stuff in there for those of you that might be more seasoned photographers. For example, things like creativity and inspiration. I initially created these courses for my members, people that paid me for extra content, but this year I rethought memberships and I have been releasing these courses for everyone for free. Today marks the release of the last course or at least the last course that is already created. There will be more for you and I will talk about that in a future video. This course is called Editing for Visual Impact and it is taught by the one and only, my one and only, <laughs> Raymond. His editing specialty is quick and dirty, but the results look amazing for social media. And that being the case, this course is shorter than the other courses. And that means that it's super approachable. Raymond uses Lightroom Classic to edit photos in this course, but like my other courses, you don't really need to use Lightroom. You'll get the point and be able to use what he talks about in edit any editing software. So if you are interested in an easy and impactful way to edit, check out Raymond's practical approach in this course. I will link to the course playlist in the description of this video, along with links to my other courses as well on the basics of photography, portraiture, landscape photography, and nature photography. Now that you know how to see Raymond edit in the course, I have pulled a few of my costumed photo projects from Halloween's past to edit right now. I used to do at least one costumed project every year in October, so I had quite a few photos to choose from. These projects were always a lot of fun because I was really able to unleash my creativity. Many of the photos I'm still happy with, like this one from my spooky little red riding hood project. I like how I edited them, but I've decided on photos today that maybe I would edit differently these days. I've chosen a few photos from three different years. The first is from 2012, which is 10 years ago. Wow. Uh, I dressed as a witchy lady brewing something in this cauldron. I've even got a spider in my hand about to drop it into my potion. And you can see in just these few that I edited this set of photos in different ways. I did that quite often back in those days, so I could show viewers different ways to edit within the same project. And you can see the edited photos are in red down here. I actually like how this first one is edited with the kind of eerie green tint, but as I was setting up for this uh, screen recording and this video, I decided to check out the presets that are built into Lightroom. I didn't actually intend to use them today. I just haven't scrolled through them in a while. So I wanted to see if there were any updates. And as I was scrolling through this one, Cinematic 07 jumped out at me, mainly because it turned my hair red. There is a lot of history behind the association between red hair and witches. It's not all good, but I decided to go with it in this set of photos. That being said, I do still want to fine tune. So as I do that, let me talk for a moment about setting yourself up for editing. By that, I mean that we were intentional with lighting to create a spooky look. You can see that the light is isolated on me. There's no light on the background, but the lighting kind of appears to glow in from the side and a little bit from below. This meant that the scene looks more cinematic rather than like a studio photo shoot. So my point here and my lesson, if you will, is to take the time to set the stage in your photography. Sometimes you don't have time and you're rushing through a shoot and you're forced to do a whole lot of editing. I get it. But if you can, taking the extra time up front will not only allow you to spend less time editing later, but like in this case, the lighting created a mood and set me up to edit these photos in any number of ways. I just realized we have a theme in the projects I chose here. 
This one from 2017 is again witchy, but this time I went with the classic pinup witch. Interestingly, I again used some color shifting here. I edited this set all in the same way. I still like this stylized look, but this definitely lends a modern take to the genre, at least in terms of the editing. So now I wanna try more realistic colors, more like you would have seen in the photos or the posters back then. The first thing I wanna do here is recreate the vignette and then I'll work with the rest of the image. Many of the posters from the 1940s had a full moon behind the witch. So while I did poke holes in the paper backdrop and illuminate it from behind to provide the look of stars, I added the vignette in post to be reminiscent of a moon. Lighting was a bit of a challenge with this hat. You can see that I have my head tilted up a bit in many of these, and that was so that my face was illuminated. Another hallmark of the era of pinup was very smooth, creamy skin. So I'll be using the texture slider to really smooth my skin out. And this is much more than I would normally do. One funny thing here is that while I love the pinup look, it's very playful and wide eyed. I struggle to recreate that as the subject or the model. This shoot was far outside of my comfort zone and quite the experiment. All right, after all that is done, I actually think that I like what I did back in 2017 better. <laughs> maybe if I had painted the moon on the background or maybe if I had really gone for it with the posing, maybe these more minimal edits would look better to me, but that's okay, it's a good exercise. In the 2012 project, I did go for it. I was more confident. I spent more time with the lighting and the overall setup, and I think it showed in the finished product. These photos from 2017 are just fine, but I think I held myself back in posing because I was insecure, and because I was preoccupied with that insecurity, I didn't quite fully realize the plans that I had for this project. I was distracted. I wasn't paying attention to the lighting and what the backdrop looked like and what the overall look and feel of the photo shoot ended up being. Okay, moving on to 2018. This was actually the last Halloween photo project I did. I had wanted to use smoke and create a ghostly out of the darkness kind of project for quite a while. In editing, you can see that I originally crushed the blacks and went with a muted color palette, and I still like it, but I wonder what this would look like in monochrome. So let's see. Now this is a project where I really did go for it as the model. Fun fact, I had just cut my hair short, so this is a lovely long wig. <laughs> and like I said a moment ago, this idea had been rolling around in my noggin for a long time. So I had finished photos already in my mind that I knew I wanted to capture. I wanted to be reaching out of the smoke to the viewer or peeking through it. It was good that I knew some of the general poses I wanted to try because using smoke is challenging. You have to move it around, which I basically did by flopping my arms around in between bursts of photos. Mm -hmm. And you can end up with photos that just look foggy. Not to mention the smoke machine set off the smoke alarm in the house the first time we used it during a Halloween party. So I set this studio up in our garage. <laughs> You know, in all my time doing self-portraits, either completely by myself or having Raymond's help, the projects I'm most proud of were always the ones where I planned what I wanted. I spent a lot of time ahead of projects thinking everything through, from wardrobe to hair and makeup to posing to location, lighting, camera gear and settings to what the finished product would look like. But it was when I also took a chance in the area of modeling that the project really became a standout. And that's it for today, friends. Make sure you check out my courses. Remember, there are links to them in the description of this video. I hope you all have a spooky Halloween and thank you for watching.